Hey guys, put the foundry in the truck today. Going over to a buddy's house. We're gonna try to get two ant hills made out of aluminum cans. The day starts by dumping out all of our cans and crushing them. I made my buddy help with this one. This is my least favorite part. I find that if you crush the cans before you dump them into the crucible, it'll actually produce a little bit less dross. Cans still produce a ton of crap, but I think if uh, they're smushed up, it doesn't get a chance to oxidize quite as much of the aluminum. Sometimes I'll melt cans and just pour them into ingots and then use the ingots for projects like this. It tends to be a little easier. That can there kind of exploded. I think what happened was we caught a little gas bubble underneath between the can and the molten aluminum. Good little pop. It happens. After everything's nice and melted, Carefully remove the crucible from the furnace, place it into my homemade pouring tool, and dump the metal into the anthill. As you'll be able to see here, the aluminum made it all the way down to the water table and started to boil. I backed away and let it finish doing its thing. That's all steam, not smoke. Once it calmed down, I poured out the rest of the metal from the crucible and set it back into the foundry. We picked out two anthills to do today, that was the first. Once I get the crucible back into the foundry, we cranked it back up and started melting more cans. Once it's solidified, we dug it out of the ground, but I'll cover that more in detail on the next one. After you get it out of the ground, set it someplace where you don't mind getting muddy and spray it out with the hose. After about 15 minutes of spraying, you get most of the dirt out, but there's still twigs and things that are intertwined and have to be picked out by hand. It's a rather impressive ant hill. That one came out so well that uh, we decided to do another. Here it is in the ground. And here's how that pour went. This one turned out to be much larger as it took the entire crucible Ten pounds of aluminum. Again, it made it to the water table, creating steam and boiling. Rather terrifying, you don't want to get molten metal onto you. Once the boiling had subsided and most of the top had solidified, my buddy took a pair of pliers and one of my ingot trays and tamped down the bubbles to make a nice flat surface. As he was tapping on it, we realized that it was still very much molten just underneath those bubbles. 
Probably not the safest idea, but it worked out okay. Through the magic of editing, we sped up the dig-out process, reducing what was about 20 minutes of grown men playing in the dirt down to something a little bit more bearable to watch. We dug down carefully by hand with a plastic shovel, trying not to hit any of the channels that had been filled with aluminum because until you actually dig it out, you don't really know which direction the anthill went. This one went pretty much straight down, which made it easy. ground careful like and all the dirt goes back in the hole then just like before take your mud ball over to some place where you don't mind getting it dirty and start hitting it with the hose This one was much larger, and there's actually a piece of glass that was buried beneath the ground that the ants had dug around and made a part of their home, and it got trapped in the aluminum. You can see it's much wider in one direction than it is the other. There's that piece of glass. It was completely trapped in the aluminum. Two ant hills out of my buddy's backyard. I'd call that a success. It says, Show me your good side. <laughs> oh, yeah.